Ulysses 15, D, the fourth of seven parts. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Ulysses by James Joyce, 15, D. Elijah, no yapping, if you please, in this booth. Jake Crane, Crail Sue, Dove Campbell, Abe Kirshner, do your coughing with your mouths shut. Say, I am operating all this trunk line. Boys, do it now. God's time is 1225. Tell your mother you'll be there. Rush your order and you play a slick ace. Join on right here. Book through to eternity junction, the non-stop run. Just one word more. Are you a god or a doggone clod? If the second advent came to Coney Island, are you ready? Flory Christ, Stephen Christ, Zoe Christ, Bloom Christ, Kitty Christ, Lynch Christ, it's up to you to sense that cosmic force. Have we cold feet about the cosmos? No. Be on the side of the angels. Be a prism. You have that something within, the higher self. You can rub shoulders with a Jesus, a Gautama, an Ingersoll. Are you all in this vibration? I say you are! You once nobble that congregation, and a buck joy ride to heaven becomes a back number. You got me? It's a life brightener, sure. The hottest stuff ever was. It's the whole pie with jam in. It's just the cutest, snappiest line out. It is immense! Super sumptuous, it restores, it vibrates, I know, and I am some vibrator, joking part aside, and getting down to bedrock. A. J. Christ Dowie and the Harmonial Philosophy. Have you got that? O. K. 77 West 69th Street. Got me? That's it. You call me up by sun phone any old time. Bumboozers, save your stamps. He shouts, Now then, our glory song! All join in heartily in the singing. Encore! He sings, Jaru! The gramophone, drowning his voice. Salem, you the disc rasps gratingly against the needle. The three whores, covering their ears, squawk, Elijah, in rolled-up shirt-sleeves, black in the face, shouts at the top of his voice, his arms uplifted. Big brother up there! Mr. President, you hear what I done just been saying to you? Certainly I sort of believe strong in you, Mr. President. I certainly am thinking now Miss Higgins and Miss Ricketts got religion way inside them. Certainly seems to me I don't never see no wusser scared female than the way you've been, Miss Flory. Just now, as I done seed you, Mr. President, you come long and help me save our sisters, dear. He winks at his audience. Our oh, Mr. President, he twigged the whole lot and he ain't saying nothing. Kitty Kate. I forgot myself. In a weak moment, I erred and did what I did on Constitution Hill. I was confirmed by the bishop and enrolled in the brown scapular. My mother's sister married a Montmorency. It was a working plumber was my ruination when I was pure. Zofanny. I let him lop it into me for the fun of it. Flory Teresa. It was in consequence of a port wine beverage on top of Hennessy's three star. <laughs> I was guilty with Whalen when he slipped into the bed. Stephen. In the beginning was the word, in the end the world without end. Blessed be the eight Beatitudes. The Beatitudes, Dixon, Madden, Crothers, Costello, Lenahan, Bannon, Mulligan, and Lynch, in white surgical students' gowns, four abreast, goose stepping, tramp, fist passed in noisy marching. The Beatitudes, incoherently. Beer, beef, battle dog, Bible, Bissinum, Barnum, Buggerum, Bishop. Leicester, in Quaker gray, knee breeches, and broad brimmed hat, says discreetly, Hmm, he is our friend. I need not mention names. Seek thou the light. 
He corantos by. Best enters in hairdresser's attire, shinily laundered, his locks in curl papers. He leads John Eglinton, who wears a mandarin's kimono of nankeen yellow, lizard lettered, and a high pagoda hat. Best, smiling, lifts the hat and displays a shaven pole from the crown of which bristles a pigtail toupee tied with an orange topknot. I was just beautifying him, don't you know? A thing of beauty, don't you know? Yates says, or I mean Keats says, John Eglinton produces a green-capped dark lantern and flashes it toward a corner with carping accent. Aesthetics and cosmetics are for the boudoir. I am out for truth, plain truth for a plain man. Tanderagi wants the facts and means to get them. In the cone of the searchlight behind the coal scuttle, Olive, holy-eyed, the bearded figure of Mananoan Mackler broods, chin on knees. He rises slowly. A cold sea wind blows from his druid mouth. About his head writhe eels and elvers. He is encrusted with weeds and shells. His right hand holds a bicycle pump. His left hand grasps a huge crayfish by its two talons. Mananoan Maclear, with a voice of waves. Aum! Heck, wallach, more ma, white yogan of the gods, a cult piemander of Hermes Trismegistos, with a voice of whistling sea wind. Punarjanam patsi punjaub. I won't have my leg pruned. It has been said by one, beware the left, the cult of Shakti. With a cry of storm birds, Shakti Shiva, dark hidden father, he smites with his bicycle pump the crayfish in his left hand. On its cooperative dial glow the twelve signs of the zodiac. He wails with the vehemence of the ocean. Aum, baum, pajam. I am the father of the homestead. I am the dreamery, creamery butter. A skeleton, Juddishand, strangles the light. The green light wanes to mauve. The gas jet, whales whistling. The gas jet. <laughs> Zoe runs to the chandelier and, crooking her leg, adjusts the mantle. Zoe, who has a fag as I'm here? Lynch, tossing a cigarette onto the table. Here. Zoe, her head perched aside in mock pride. Is that the way to hand the pot to a lady? She stretches up to light the cigarette over the flame, twirling it slowly, showing the brown tufts of her armpits. Lynch, with his poker, lifts boldly a side of her slip. Bare from her garters up, her flesh appears under the sapphire, a nixie's green. She puffs calmly at her cigarette. Can you see the beauty spot of my behind? Lynch, I'm not looking. Zoe makes sheep's eyes. No. You wouldn't do a less thing. Would you suck a lemon? Squinting in mock shame, she glances with sidelong meaning at Bloom, then twists round towards him, pulling her slip free of the poker. Blue fluid again flows over her flesh. Bloom stands, smiling desirously, twirling his thumbs. Kitty Ricketts licks her middle finger with her spittle and, gazing in the mirror, smooths both eyebrows. Lipoti Virag Basilicogrammati shoots rapidly down through the chimney flue and struts two steps to the left on gawky pink stilts. He is sausaged into several overcoats and wears a brown mackintosh under which he holds a roll of parchment. In his left eye flashes the monocle of Cashel Boyle O'Connor, Fitzmaurice Tisdale Ferrell. On his head is perched an Egyptian pshint. Two quills project over his ears. Virag. Heels together, bows. My name is Virag Lipoti of Zombafeli. He coughs thoughtfully, dryly. <coughs> Promiscuous nakedness is much in evidence hereabouts, eh? Inadvertently, her back view revealed the fact that she is not wearing those rather intimate garments of which you are a particular devotee. The injection mark on the thigh, I hope you 
perceived good bloom gran papachi but virag number two on the other hand she of the cherry rouge and coiffus white whose hair owes not a little to our tribal elixir of gopher wood is in walking costume and tightly stayed by her sit i should opine backbone in front so to say correct me but i always understood the act so performed by skittish humans with glimpses of lingerie appealed to you in virtue of its exhibitionist stasticity in a word hippogriff am i right bloom she is rather lean virag not unpleasantly absolutely well observed in those pannier pockets of the skirt and slightly peg-top effect are devised to suggest bunchiness of hip a new purchase at some monster sale for which a gull has been mulcted meretricious finery to deceive the eye observe the attention to details of dust specks never put on you to-morrow what you can wear to-day parallax with a nervous twitch of his head did you hear my brain go snap polysyllabax bloom an elbow resting in a hand a forefinger against his cheek she seems sad virag cynically his weasel teeth bared yellow draws down his left eye with a finger and barks hoarsely hoax beware of a flapper and bogus mournful lily of the alley all possess bachelor's button discovered by raldus columbus tumble her Columble her. Chameleon. More genially. Well, then, permit me to draw your attention to item number three. There is plenty of her visible to the naked eye. Observe the mass of oxygenated vegetable matter on her skull. What ho! She bumps. The ugly duckling of the party, long casted and deep in keel. Bloom regretfully. When you come out without your gun. Virag. We can do you all brands, mild, medium, and strong. Pay your money, take your choice. How happy could you be with either? Bloom. With? Virag, his tongue up curling. Liam, look! Her beam is broad. She is coated with quite a considerable layer of fat. Obviously, mammal, in weight of bosom, you remark that she has in front well to the fore two protuberances of very respectable dimensions, inclined to fall in the noonday soup-plate, while on her rear lower down are two additional protuberances suggestive of potent rectum and tumescent for palpation, which leave nothing to be desired save compactness. Such fleshy parts are the product of careful nurture. When coop fattened, their livers reach an elephantine size. Pellets of new bread with fenugreek and gum benjamin, swamped down by potions of green tea, endow them during their brief existence with natural pincushions of quite colossal blubber. What suits your book, eh? Flesh hot pots of Egypt to hanker after, wallow in it. Like podium. His throat twitches. Slap bang, there he goes again bloom the sty i dislike virag arches his eyebrows contact with a gold ring they say argumentum ad feminam as we said in old rome and ancient greece in the consulship of diplodocus and ichthyosaurus for the rest eve's sovereign remedy not for sale higher only huguenot he twitches it is a funny sound he coughs encouragingly, <laughs> but possibly it is only a wart. I presume you have remembered what I will have taught you on that head. Wheaten meal with honey and nutmeg. Bloom reflecting. Wheaten meal with lycopodium and syllabax. This searching ordeal, it has been an unusually fatiguing day, a chapter of accidents. Wait, I mean, warts blood spreads warts. You said... Virag severely, his nose hard-humped, his side-eye winking. Stop twirling your thumbs and give a good old thunk. See, you have forgotten. Exercise your pneumotechnic. La causa es santa. Tara, tara. Aside. He will surely remember. Bloom. Rosemary also, did I understand you to say, or willpower over parasitic tissues? Then nay, no, I have an inkling. The touch of a dead hand cures. 
Nemo? Virag excitedly. I say so, I say so, e'en so, technic. He taps his parchment roll energetically. This book tells you how to act with all descriptive particulars. Consult index for agitated fear of aconite, melancholy of muriatic, priapic pulsatia. Virag is going to talk about amputation. Our old friend, caustic. They must be starved. Snip off the horse hair under the denned neck. But to change the venue of the bulgar and the basque. Have you made up your mind whether you like or dislike women in male habiliments? With a dry snigger. You intended to devote an entire year to the study of the religious problem in the summer months of 1886 to square the circle and win that million. Pomegranate! From the sublime to the ridiculous is but a step. Pajamas, let us say? Or stocking get, gusseted knickers, closed? Or put we the case, those complicated combinations, kamenickers? He crows derisively. Kee, kee, ri, kee. Bloom surveys uncertainly the three whores, then gazes at the veiled mauve light, hearing the ever-flying moth. Bloom. I wanted then to have now concluded. Nightdress was never. Hence this. But tomorrow is a new day will be. Past was is today. What now is will then morrow, as now was be past yester. Virag prompts in a pig's whisper. Insects of the day spend their brief existence in reiterated coition, lured by the smell of the inferiorly pulchritudinous female possessing extendified pudental nerve in dorsal region. Pretty Paul. His yellow parrot beak gabbles nasally. They had a proverb in the Carpathians in or about the year 5550 of our era. One tablespoon of honey will attract, friend Bruin, more than half a dozen barrels of first-choice malt vinegar. Bears buzz bothers bees. But of this apart, at another time we may resume. We are very pleased, we others. He coughs and, bending his brow, rubs his nose thoughtfully with a scooping hand. You shall find that these night insects follow the light, an illusion for remember their complex, unadjustable eye. For all these naughty points, see the seventeenth book of my Fundamentals of Sexology, or the Love Passion, which Dr. L. B. says is the book sensation of the year. Some, to example, there are again whose movements are automatic. Perceive. That is his appropriate son. Night bird, night sun, night town. Chase me, Charlie. He blows into Bloom's ear. Buzz. Bloom. Be your blue bottle to other day butting shadow on wall dazed self, then we wander dazed down shirt. Good job, I. Virag, his face impassive, laughs in a rich feminine key. Splendid. <laughs> Spanish fly in his fly or mustard plaster on his dibble. He gobbles gluttonously with turkey wattles. Bubbly jock, bubbly jock. Where are we? Open sesame cometh forth. He unrolls his parchment rapidly and reads, his glow-worm's nose running backwards over the letters which he claws. Stay, good friend, I bring thee thy answer. Red bank oysters will shortly be upon us. I'm the best a cook. Those succulent bivalves may help us, and the truffles of Perigord, tubers dislodged through Mr. Omnivorous Porker, were usurped in cases of nervous debility or viragitis. Though they stink, yet they sting. He wags his head with cackling raillery. Jocular! With my eyeglass in my ocular! He sneezes. Amen! Bloom absently. Ocularly woman's bivalve case is worse. Always open sesame, the cloven sex. Why they fear vermin, creeping things, yet Eve and the serpent contradicts. Not a historical fact. Obvious analogy to my idea. Serpents, too, are gluttons for women's milk. Wind their way through miles of omnivorous forest to suck succulent her breast dry. Like those bubbly jocular Roman matrons one reads of in Elephantiliasis. Virag, his mouth projected in hard wrinkles, eyes stonily, forlornly closed, psalms in outlandish monotone. That the cows with their those distended udders, that they have been thee, thee known. 
flume. I'm going to scream. I beg your pardon. Ah, so. He repeats. Spontaneously to seek out the Saurian's lair in order to entrust their teats to his avid suction. Ant milks aphis. Profoundly. Instinct rules the world in life, in death. Virag, head askew, arches his back and hunched wing shoulders, peers at the moth out of blear bulged eyes, points a horning claw and cries, Who's moth, moth? Who's dear Gerald? Dear Ger- That you? Oh dear, he is Gerald. Oh, I much fear he shall be most badly burned. Will some pleasy Persian not now impediment so catastrophics mit agitation of first class table numpkin? He mews. Puss, 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 puss. He sighs, draws back, and stares sideways down with dropping underjaw. Well, well, he doth rest anon. He snaps his jaws suddenly on the air. The moth. I'm a tiny, tiny thing, ever flying in the spring, round and round a ring a ring. Long ago I was a king, now I do this kind of thing, on the wing, on the wing. Bing! He rushes against the mauve shade, flapping noisily. Pretty, 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 pretty petticoats. From left upper entrance, with two gliding steps, Henry Flower comes forward to left front center. He wears a dark mantle and drooping plumed sombrero. He carries a silver-stringed inlaid dulcimer and long-stemmed bamboo Jacob's pipe, its clay bowl fashioned as a female head. He wears dark velvet hose and silver-buckled pumps. He has the romantic saviour's face with flowing locks, thin beard, and moustache. His spindle legs and sparrow feet are those of the tenor Mario, prince of Candia. He settles down his gophered ruffs and moistens his lips with the passage of his amorous tongue. Henry, in a low, dulcet voice, touching the strings of his guitar. There is a flower that bloometh. Virag, truculent, his jowl set, stares at the lamp. Grave bloom regards Zoe's neck. Henry Gallant turns with pendant dewlap to the piano. Stephen, to himself, Play with your eyes shut. Imitate pa. Filling my belly with husks of swine. Too much of this. I will arise and go to my... Expect this is the... Steve, thou art in a parlous way. Must visit old Deasy or telegraph. Our interview of this morning has left on me a deep impression. Though our ages will write fully tomorrow. <laughs> I'm... I'm partially drunk by the way he touches the keys again minor chord comes now yes not much however almadano artifoni holds out a baton roll of music with vigorous mustache work artifoni si rifletta le rovino tutto flori sing us something love's old sweet song stephen no voice. I am a most finished artist. Lynch, did I show you the letter about the lute? Flory, smirking. The bird that can sing and won't sing. The Siamese twins, Philip drunk and Philip sober, two Oxford dons with lawnmowers, appear in the window embrasure. Both are masked with Matthew Arnold's face. Philip sober. Take a fool's advice, all is not well. Work it out with the butt-end of a pencil, like a good young idiot. Three pounds twelve you got, two notes, one sovereign, two crowns, if youth but knew. Mooney's and Ville, Mooney's sur mer, the Moira, Larche, Holes Street Hospital, Burks, eh? I am watching you. Philip drunk impatiently. Ah, bosh, man, go to hell. I paid my way. If I could only find out about octaves. Reduplication of personality. Who was it told me his name? His lawnmower begins to purr. Aha, yes. Oh, e moi, ça, ça, gapo. Have a notion I was here before. When was it not Atkinson's his card? I have somewhere. Mac somebody. Unmac, I have it. 
Ah, uh, he told me about... Hold on. Swineburn, was it? No. Flory. And the song... Stephen. Spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Flory. Are you out of Maynooth? You're like someone I knew once. Stephen. Out of it now. To himself. Clever. Philip drunk and Philip sober, their lawnmowers purring with a rigadoon of grass homes. Clever ever. Out of it, out of it. By the by, have you the book, The Thing, the Ash Plant? Yes, there it is, yes. Clever ever. Out to fit now. Keep in condition. Do like us. Zoe. There was a priest down here two nights ago to do his bit of business with his coat buttoned up. You needn't try to hide. I says to him, I know you've a Roman collar. Virag. Perfectly logical from his standpoint. Fall of man. Harshly, his pupils waxing. To hell with the Pope. Nothing new under the sun. I am the Virag who disclosed the sex secrets of monks and maidens. Why I left the Church of Rome. Read the priest, the woman, and the confessional. Penrose, flipperty, jippert. He wriggles. Woman undoing with sweet perdor her belt of rush rope. Offers her all moist yoni to man's lingam. Short time after, man presents woman with pieces of jungle meat. Woman shows joy and covers herself with feather skins. Man loves her yoni fiercely with big lingam, the stiff one. He cries, Coactus volui. Then giddy woman will run about. Strong man grasps woman's wrist. Woman squeals, bites, spucks. Man now, fierce angry, strikes woman's fat yadgana. He chases his tail. Piff, paff, popo. He stops, sneezes. Pchip. He worries his butt. Pchip. Lynch. I hope you gave the good father a penance. Nine glorias for shooting a bishop. Zoe spouts walrus smoke through her nostrils. He couldn't get a connection. Only, you know, sensation, a dry rush. Bloom. Poor man. Zoe, lightly. Only for what happened him. Bloom. How? Virag, a diabolical rictus of black luminosity contracting his visage, cranes his scraggy neck forward. He lifts a moon-calf nozzle and howls. Verfluchte goim! He had a father, forty fathers. He never existed. Pig God! He had two left feet. He was Judas Iachia, a Libyan eunuch, the Pope's bastard. He leans out on tortured forepaws, elbows bent rigid, his eyes agonizing in his flat skull-neck, and yelps over the mute world. A son of a whore! Apocalypse! Kitty. And Mary Shorthall that was in the lock with the pox she got from Jimmy Pigeon in the blue caps had a child off him that couldn't swallow and was smothered with the convulsions in the mattress we all subscribed for the funeral. Philip drunk gravely. Qui vous a mis dans cette a fichu position, Philippe. Philip sober gaily. C'était le sacre pigeon, Philippe. Kitty unpins her hat and sets it down calmly, patting her henna hair. And a prettier, a daintier head of winsome curls was never seen on a whore's shoulders. Lynch puts on her hat. She whips it off. Lynch laughs. And to such delights has Mechnikov inoculated anthropoid apes. Flory nods. Locomotor a taxi. Zoe gaily. Oh, my dictionary. Lynch. Three wise virgins. Virag, ague shaken, profuse yellow spawn foaming over his bony epileptic lips. She sold love filters, white wax, orange flower, panther, the Roman centurion, polluted her with his genitories. He sticks out a flickering phosphorescent scorpion tongue, his hand on his fork. Messiah! He burst her tympanum. With gibbering baboon's cries, he jerks his hips in the cynical spasm. Hick, heck, hock, hock, hook, cock, cook. Ben Jumbo Dollard. Rubicund. Muscle-bound, hairy-nostrilled, huge-bearded, cabbage-eared, shaggy-chested, shock-maned, fat, papped, stands forth. His loins and genitals tightened into a pair of black bathing bag-slops. Ben Dollard. 
nackering castanet bones in his huge padded paws yodels jovially in bass barrel tone when love absorbs my ardent soul the virgins nurse callahan and nurse quigley burst through the ring-keepers and the ropes and mob him with open arms the virgins gushingly big ben ben my tree a voice hold that fellow with the bad breeches ben dullard smites his thigh in abundant laughter hold him now henry caressing on his breast a severed female head murmurs thine heart my love he plucks his lute strings when first i saw virag sloughing his skins his multitudinous plumage malting rats he yawns showing a coal-black throat and closes his jaws by an upward push of his parchment roll after having said which i took my departure farewell fare thee well drack henry flower combs his moustache and beard rapidly with a pocket comb and gives a cow's lick to his hair steered by his rapier he glides to the door his wild harp slung behind him virag reaches the door in two ungainly stilt hops his tail cocked and deftly claps sideways on the wall a puce yellow fly bill butting it with his head the fly bill k i i post no bills strictly confidential dr high franks henry all is lost now virag unscrews his head in a trice and holds it under his arm virag's head quack exuant severally stephen over his shoulder to zoe you would have preferred the fighting parson who founded the protestant error but beware antisthenes the dog sage and the last of arius hersiarchus the agony in the closet lynch all one and the same god to her stephen devoutly and sovereign lord of all things flory to stephen i'm sure you're a spoiled priest or a monk lynch he is a cardinal's son stephen cardinal sin monks of the screw his eminence simon stephen cardinal dedalus primate of all ireland appears in the doorway dressed in red soutane sandals and socks seven dwarf simian accolades also in red cardinal sins uphold his train peeping under it he wears a battered silk hat sideways on his head his thumbs are stuck in his armpits and his palms outspread round his neck hangs a rosary of corks ending on his breast in a corkscrew cross releasing his thumbs he invokes grace from on high with large wave gestures and proclaims with bloated pomp the cardinal conservio lies captured he lies in the lowest dungeon with manacles and chains round his limbs weighing upward of three tons he looks at all for a moment his right eye closed tight his left cheek puffed out then unable to repress his merriment he rocks to and fro arms akimbo and sings with broad rollicking humour oh the poor little fellow <laughs> his legs they were yellow he was plump fat and heavy and brisk as a snake but some bloody savage to graze his white cabbage he murdered nell flaherty's duck-loving drake a multitude of midges swarms white over his robe he scratches himself with crossed arms at his ribs grimacing and exclaims i'm suffering the agony of the damned by the hokey fiddle thanks be to jesus those funny little chaps are not unanimous if they were they'd walk me off the face of the bloody globe his head aslant he blesses curtly with four and middle fingers imparts the easter kiss and double shuffles off comically swaying his hat from side to side shrinking quickly to the size of his train bearers the dwarf acolytes giggling peeping nudging ogling easter kissing zigzag behind him his voice is heard mellow from afar merciful male melodious shall carry my heart to thee shall carry my heart to thee 
and the breath of the balmy night shall carry my heart to thee the trick door handle turns the door handle <laughs> zoe the devil is in that door a male form passes down the creaking staircase and is heard taking the waterproof and hat from the rack bloom starts forward involuntarily and half closing the door as he passes takes the chocolate from his pocket and offers it nervously to zoe zoe sniffs his hair briskly hmm thank your mother for the rabbits i'm very fond of what i like bloom hearing a male voice in talk with the whores on the doorstep pricks his ears if it were he after or because not or the double event zoe tears open the silver foil fingers was made before forks she breaks off and nibbles a piece gives a piece to kitty ricketts and then turns kittenishly to lynch no objection to french lozenges he nods she taunts him have it now or wait till you get it he opens his mouth his head cocked she whirls the prize in left circle his head follows she whirls it back in right circle he eyes her catch she tosses a piece with an adroit snap he catches it and bites it through with a crack kitty chewing the engineer i was with at the bazaar does have lovely ones full of the best liquors and the viceroy was there with his lady the gas we had on the toft's hobby horses <laughs> i'm giddy still bloom in Spengali's fur overcoat with folded arms and Napoleonic forelock, frowns in ventriloquial exorcism with piercing eagle glance towards the door. Then, rigid with left foot advanced, he makes a swift pass with impelling fingers and gives the sign of past master, drawing his right arm downwards from his left shoulder. Go, 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 I conjure you, whoever you are. A male cough and tread are heard passing through the mist outside. Bloom's features relax. He places a hand in his waistcoat, posing calmly. Zoe offers him chocolate. Bloom, solemnly. Thanks. Zoe. Do as you're bid, here. A firm heel-clacking tread is heard on the stairs. Bloom takes the chocolate. Aphrodisiac? Tansy and Pennyroyal? But I bought it. Vanilla combs or... Nemo confused light confuses memory red influences lupus colors affect women's characters any they have this black makes me sad eat and be merry for tomorrow he eats influence taste too mauve but it is so long since i seems new afro that priest must come better late than never try truffles at andrews the door opens bella cohen a massive whore-mistress enters she is dressed in a three-quarter ivory gown fringed round the hem with tasseled selvage and cools herself flirting a black horn fan like minnie hauk in carmen on her left hand are wedding and keeper rings her eyes are deeply carboned she has a sprouting moustache her olive face is heavy slightly sweated and full-nosed with orange-tainted nostrils she has large pendant beryl eardrops bella my word i'm all of a muck sweat she glances round her at the couples then her eyes rest on bloom with hard insistence her large fan winnows wind toward her heated face neck and embon point her falcon eyes glitter the fan flirting quickly then slowly married i see bloom yes partly i have mislaid the fan half opening then closing and the mistress is master petticoat government bloom looks down with a sheepish grin that is so the fan folding together rests against her left eardrop have you forgotten me bloom yes yo the fan folded akimbo against her waist 
is me her was you dreamed before was then she him you a since knew am all them and the same now we bella approaches gently tapping with the fan bloom wincing powerful being in my eyes read that slumber which women love the fan tapping we have met you are mine it is fate bloom cowed exuberant female enormously i desiderate your domination i am exhausted abandoned no more young i stand so to speak with an unposted letter bearing the extra regulation fee before the too late box of the general post office of human life the door and window open at right angle cause a draught of thirty-two feet per second according to the law of falling bodies i have felt this instant a twinge of sciatica in my left gluteal muscle it runs in our family poor dear papa a widower was a regular barometer from it he believed in animal heat a kind of tabby lined his winter waistcoat near the end remembering king david and the sunumite he shared his bed with athos faithful after death a dog spittle as you probably he winces ah end of ulysses 15d Recorded by Anita Roy Dobbs, San Francisco, June 2006.